Hello, and welcome to another episode of the SirsGroup.com podcast. I am Barbara. And I'm JC. And today, we would like to talk about what SIRS looks like. And SIRS is chronic inflammatory response syndrome, if you're new here. Um, welcome. <laughs> welcome. This is a, a thing. Yep. Uh, AKA mold illness. So the reason that we wanted to talk about this topic is we really want to give you a better idea of how SIRS manifests in people and spoiler alert, it manifests in really different ways sometimes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so SIRS it happens when somebody who's genetically predisposed to being really bad at eliminating a biotoxin encounters that biotoxin. And the biotoxin itself is bad for us. It's a toxin. Um, but also the downstream inflammatory impact causes a multi-symptom, multi-system presentation, meaning that it impacts a lot of different areas of your body. And there are 37 specific symptoms that SIRS providers look at to diagnose you. They bucket them into 13 different symptom clusters. If you have eight of the 13 symptom clusters, you very likely have SIRS. But we have found in reality and practicality that maybe those like just reading a list of 37 different symptoms isn't doesn't speak to the actual experience of someone who has SIRS. It's a lot of different things, but most SIRS people tend to have like two or three things that are like their big SIRS things. Like it's the thing they have where they're like, I am unwell and I need to fix this. For me, it was joint pain. For you, it was GI issues, but we both have SIRS. Right. And that is wildly different. I mean, you were walking with a cane for God's sake. And, um, and for me, it was just this just kind of a uh, crappy feeling it with no matter what I ate, I was carnivore for over a year and I still wasn't feeling good. That's a really big sign, by the way, that you have SIRS. If you've done something as insane, eh, I shouldn't call it insane, but as, as, uh, I don't even want to call it restrictive. Socially, socially extreme. There you go. Yes. If you've done something as socially extreme as the carnivore diet in order to feel better and you're still not feeling 100%, it's probably SIRS. Um, but yeah, that's, but, and then we also know other people where it's manifested more as like vertigo and panic attacks and not sleeping through the night. Like those are like their main, like, you might have other symptoms beyond that, but when those are like messing up your daily life, those are what you're going to focus on. And that's going to be how SIRS like manifest to you and your experience. Oh, a hundred percent. For me, like SIRS triggered an autoimmune condition and I might be biased, but I think basically all autoimmune conditions are probably triggered by SIRS. So yeah. if you have an autoimmune condition, like just look into SIRS. That, that would be my encouragement to you because it, it really was the hope for healing I never thought I could have because autoimmune just feels like this is my life. This is how I have to live my life and that I have to manage this for the rest of my life when it's really like, well, maybe something triggered that autoimmune condition because up until you know 27 years in my life, I never experienced any symptoms from that autoimmune condition. So it, to me, it was very clear that something had triggered this. It turned out to be SIRS. So for me, that was ankylosing spondylitis, but that could be ulcerative colitis, it, ulcerative colitis or plaque psoriasis. Like there's just any autoimmune condition, you might as well look into SIRS. I mean, why right. not? Yes. And if a conventional doctor has given you a diagnosis for which there is no cure and they just are going to give you medications to make your life tolerable, maybe for the rest of it, <laughs> um, that like chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, um, and I, you, I think you mentioned ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, um, SIBO for me, SIBO was my first diagnosis that you know, brought me into the world of carnivore and eventually SIRS. Um, these are things that doctors don't really know how to fix. And I think it's because they're not looking at the actual underlying cause, which is chronic inflammatory response syndrome, turns out. 
basically, if your doctor just renames your symptoms with a fancy Greek name, <laughs> like fibromyalgia <laughs> is inflammation of muscle fibers. It's like, okay, but like, thank you. That's what I told you. And you're just saying that back to me. Right. Um, so definitely if you have anything that, that's of that ilk, sirs. Like, just look into it. Why not? If you have to deal with this for the rest of your life per your doctor anyways, you might as well look for other opportunities to actually heal. Right. And I think that's that's also, you know, maybe our our big message to carnivores, especially the people who keep harping on carnivore harder. Oh, you're still drinking coffee. You need to eliminate that. That's why you have night sweats. no. <laughs> that's not why it's because of sirs um and and carnivore is a fantastic i will say it i've said it a million times i'll say it again carnivore is a fantastic foundation for healing it is the least inflammatory diet that you could be on it's it's pure nutrient density goodness not knocking carnivore at all but when there's an underlying biotoxin in your system and there's inflammation going crazy all over the place and messing up your life in some major way, however it's manifesting, carnivore is not going to fix that for you. And if you are on the lion diet and you can't even eat anything outside of ruminant meat, or it, it matters if you add or take away salt, like your life changes, these are more, more things that point to SIRS. Absolutely. And there's like some really hallmark SIRS symptoms too. Like there's really specific ones like plantar fasciitis. I don't, I didn't know this when I had plantar fasciitis. That was actually my first SIRS symptom was I had plantar fasciitis. And then later after I was diagnosed with SIRS, um, I think I mentioned it to Nutrition with Judy and she was like, oh yeah, that's a SIRS thing. And I was like, what? Um, another big one is like OCD, anxiety disorders, depressive disorders, anything where you're just like, you don't feel like yourself, I would say, look into SIRS. Um, another big one is hair loss because of the downstream impact of the inflammation. A lot of people with um, SIRS will have telogen effluvium, which is chronic hair loss. And then another big one we see in the carnivore community is stubborn weight gain or stubborn weight loss, um, typically caused by leptin resistance. And guess what? Downstream impact of SIRS. Yep. Lots of common stuff. Muscle cramps. Mm -hmm. Muscle cramps are also huge. If you just constantly get them and they're like almost debilitating or they're waking you up in the middle of the night, that's a thing. And that thing is SIRS. <laughs> yeah, we're getting up at 4 a.m. to pee. I feel like we could make this an inf infomercial. Do you wake up at 4 a.m. to pee? Do you have <laughs> night sweats? Do you have frequent urination? You might have SIRS. <laughs> That's it. It's, That's the commercial. That is. And that would be accurate. Um, and we, we can't forget, though, like the overall fatigue, brain fog, walking into a room and not remembering why you walked into it in the first place. When you do try to read a book, you're reading the same paragraph over and over again. If you go to a website and you see a wall of text and you need to read this text, but you're like, I don't want to do that. Just nope right out of there. Just nope right out of there. That is SIRS. I mean, that's, these are all things, I think everything that I just listed are definitely things that I personally experienced. Yeah. And just to kind of uh, reiterate that is I said my biggest SIRS symptom was joint pain. And that was like what motivated me to pursue SIRS treatment was I was in so much pain all the time. But looking back, I would say the biggest benefit I've had from SIRS treatment is feeling like a, myself again. Yep. Like I did not realize how much I'd lost myself, how much like depression, anxiety, just like negative constant mindset that I had and how difficult everything felt until I started treatment. And I, looking back, I'm like, I found myself again. I am myself again. I feel like myself again. I, I just, you can't put a price tag on that. Nope. And, and I know so many people will chalk that sort of thing up to age. And I know we d refuse to do that because we're not that old. Um, but at the same time, like I don't ever chalk it up to age. I don't want to have that kind of brain fog or forgetting what I'm doing halfway through doing it when I'm 80. And I don't intend to, because now that I know that SIRS is a thing, I'm going to know, well, when those symptoms creep back up into my life, 
I think I'll be able to pretty quickly recognize, oh, I must be an exposure. I must, there must be a biotoxin of some kind in my environment. I'm going to go get retested and make sure of that because that's probably the culprit. Yeah. And we've seen, you know, we're not that old and we've seen people who are not that much older than us, but older also go through treatment and have the same experience where yeah. turns out these things aren't due to aging. Right. Um, we, I think there's a quote that like you should like skid into he- uh, heaven, like sideways with lots of bruises. Like we should live our lives until we die. There shouldn't be this slow, steady decline until death. You don't see that in other animals. You shouldn't see that in people. Yep. Totally agree. I like that. Metaphor. Yeah, I almost said hell, and I don't like. I don't know what that <laughs> says about me. <laughs> but that was where I was like, "That's where I'm going." But um, right. hopefully not. Um, uh, but yeah, I definitely think there's something to that. And like, is it aging or is it biotoxins? Right. We may but- never know. <laughs> we do know, but we do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But yeah, I think uh, I think that covers it. I think we got our point across. I feel like I was talking directly to so many people I know in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's serious. <laughs> like, I just want to shake people sometimes. Oh, that is that is frustrating to just watch people spinning their wheels and like doing biohacking and cutting out more and more things to this race to restriction when it's like, just go for the root cause. It's going to be more efficient in the long run. You it know, really you could is. spend 20 years spinning your, spinning your wheels or you could spend 12 to 18 months doing a service treatment. Yep. yep. Choice is yours. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like <laughs> feel like we're handing people a red or blue pill right now. I love it. Yeah, well, um, yeah, I'm here for it. Uh, well, if you have decided to take the red pill and you also would like some support and a community <laughs> to make you feel better about that decision, because you know, it can it can suck to decide that you know I have an illness that I need to treat. It it sucks in the moment, and then you start feeling better through treatment, and then you realize it doesn't suck. Um, so, but if you want some support in that, uh, we have a wonderful group over at the com, and you should join us, uh, and check us out. Uh, there's a link in the description. Yeah. We'll see you over there.